In this video, we're going to take a look at using a shape string to do engraving of text. So Alexander Cool asked if I could create something to show you how to use shape strings. Um, the text in FreeCAD is not really something you can use for um, modeling or, or uh, routing CNC work, but the shape string works beautifully. It really is good. So let me show you how it works. I'm going to use my script, which basically just uh, creates a new file and a part and a body and a sketch. So that's all just done. It's just a one click. And I've talked about that before, so I'm not going to waste time on it this time. So what we're going to do is I'm going to create, <coughs> excuse me, I'm going to create a plaque that I can put some kind of engraving text on. And the first thing I'm going to do is to center that plaque over this center point. That way <clears throat> everything's working out of the origin so that when I do um, my work, every, everything in the CNC is going to start from this center point. So if I put text in here, when I set up my tool, I want it to be in the center of where the text is going to end up. So if that makes sense, we are going to uh, constrain this guy. I'm going to make it 150 so that we've got enough room to put a little bit of text in there. And I'm going to make it probably 70 high, I think, just to give us enough space to work with. So that is my plaque. And I am going to move this guy down. And I am going to, so I just took a second to start my um, mouse follower so you can see what I'm doing here. And we're going to put that in the middle. <clears throat> Close up that sketch and turn that into a pad. <clears throat> I'm going to reverse it 10 millimeters so that now this pad is on the XY plane. So this, the face of this pad. So everything here went backwards from the XY plane. Just makes it easier for when we're doing the, the sketch. We have our basically a, a plaque or a plate that we can put our um, text onto. Now I'll show you the shape string. For that, we have to go into the draft workbench. And once the draft workbench fires up, it puts this grid on the front. Don't worry about that grid. It's just for uh, placement. And oh, one thing I should show you is I am working with version 22611 of version 0.19. So it's revision number 22611 of version 0 0.19. Um, definitely your version may make a difference, but I always work in 0.19 because it's proven to be much better than the the 0.18, which is the current release. So I'm using the uh, development release. Now, of course, it's under development, so things may change as it goes along and you may find bugs in it. But to be honest with you, I've been using this for months and have managed to get around or work around anything that I found to be an issue. And if I do find an issue, I normally go over to the forums and help them or give them the information and they'll help me by fixing it. So. <laughs> It's, uh, it works out very well. So getting back to our shape string, we're going to create a shape from a text string by using a specific font and a replacement. The closed shapes can be used for extrusions and Boolean operations. So you can actually pad this text. You can um, pocket this text. So you can, you can actually use it for modeling. But when you're using it for engraving, you don't need to um, pad it or, po or pocket it. You can just use it as a, a shape string. So that's what we're going to do here. So I'm going to hit the shape string. And what it's going to do is it's going to ask me for a point to put it on. So I'm going to start out by just putting it on this center point, just roughly. It doesn't matter because I'm going to move it afterwards. Um, and then it's going to ask me what the text should be. And I'm just going to use the text of engrave just for interest i'm going to make this text i'm actually going to make it 15 high to give us a chance to engrave it and now here's the the secret source so you need a font file to put in there which will give 
this um, text its shape. And to get a font, you can basically go to this website. It's called www.dafont.com. And most of these are free. And if you're not sure, you can look on over here. You can see it says free for personal use. And then you can download that. So I've already downloaded this Texas Tango, and that's what we're going to use in this case. But this has many, many, many different um, fonts that you can use. So if you just look uh, at any of any of the fonts that they have in here, um, it's actually uh, here I search for Texas. So I'm going to change that. Um, I'm actually going to change it over here because that this is actually an ad, this piece, so you don't want to do it there. So if I change this and say um, Gothic, maybe, you'll see that there are lots of different Gothic fonts that you can choose from. Um, and you don't want to use these ones up here because these, these ones here are in an ad. Basically, these are commercial fonts, so they won't be free. But if you look here... These are all free for personal use, shareware. If it's shareware now, you should really donate to it because or you should really pay for it. Um, so you can look down here, free for personal use, 100% free, free for personal use. So I recommend this as a, as a starting point anyway. So let's go ahead and see what you need to do. So once you've unzipped your, your font file, what you're going to do is you're going to go into um, FreeCAD fonts, which is where I put mine. So I put mine in my free CAD uh, directory under fonts. And I have this Texas Tango. And then when you see the files, there's going to be a text file, gives you the instructions. There's going to be a, a picture of it. And then there's going to be the actual font file. So this one is a .otf file. And I'm going to open that. And nothing happened. Why did nothing happen? Because I haven't hit OK yet. So it's it's fine to hit OK right now and let that font um, pop in. And then we can look at it and say, well, it's in the wrong place and it may be too big. So I may want to change the size of it. Before you start doing any path actions, creating the engraving path, you want to um, position this. And that's why I put this plaque here. I'm not, I'm not literally going to engrave on a plaque of this size. But I want to be able to see that it's centered and I want to be able to see that it's in the right spot. One thing I suggest doing, again, make sure you've got the text as you want it to be. So I recommend you measure this text uh, so that you know roughly what the size is. That way you can center it around the center of the LCS because there's no justification that you can't say I want it centered in the middle or above. For now, it's, it's basically centered on this bottom corner. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure that. And again, I... It, it's an engraving, so it doesn't have to be perfect, but it, you want it to be somewhere close. So if I look there, that distance is 178.5. And if I measure this way, it is 27.1 tall. So I, I don't mind the 27.1, but that 178 is going to be bigger than my piece here. Um, do I care? Yeah, it's probably too big right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the shape string. And I'm going to change the size of it. I'm going to make that 10. And remember, I've showed you this before, but sometimes when you change these parameters, um, they don't change until you tab off them. So you tab off that, and now everything changed. So 10 looks like a nice size. I'm quite happy with that. Now I want to move that guy over to the left. To do that, I can pop in here and look at my position. And literally just down arrow. And here we go. It's moving over. Now, I measured that, and I know it's 178.5. So if I know halfway of that is, uh, quick mental math, is 85, 89. So let's say 89. Um, so if I say go negative 89, oops, that's not 178. Remember, I made the text smaller. So it's actually only 120. So if I say 60 for that shape string, it should be 
right in the center. And then, of course, I need to remeasure this height because that changed too. So I can get rid of these two dimensions. I don't need those. Those are the old sizes. So the height of it is 17.2. So half of that would be roughly 9. So I can say minus 9 for my y direction. And that should get me right around the center there. So everything looks good. That looks central. Quite happy with that. And of course, if I wanted to, if I wanted to tilt it, I could do that. So everything's going to be rotating in the Z axis. So whichever one of these is, is positive is the axis that it's going to rotate in. My Z axis comes straight out of the screen. So, uh, you know, we have X and Y. And so my Z axis, I'm just turning those off, my Z axis is coming straight out of the screen at me. So if I do this and change this angle, 10 degrees say, you can see it's rotating around this point, which is its its origin point, and it's rotated 10 degrees. So if I want to rotate it uh, in a different direction, if I want to rotate it um, in the X or the Y plane, I'll just change whichever axis is going to be positive. So if I want to do it in the X plane, I'm going to make that zero. I'm going to turn it this way so we can see it. Now, if I change the angle to 10 degrees, you'll see it comes up in the X plane. So you, you can manipulate this shape string to any way that you want it. So if it's going on a, on a face, um, Rather than draw it directly on that face, you're better off to manipulate this text so that it's sitting in front of the face. Um, that's because of the topology issue. So if you attach it to a face and then you change that model, it's going to lose its uh, its origin and that'll, that'll be a problem. So the text is there, looks good. And what we want to do now is we want to create the engraving for this. So the engraving is pretty easy. We're just going to go into the path workbench and we're going to create a new job. And when we create the new job, it pops up and says, what do you want in this job? Well, I don't want the solid. I don't want this plaque. I want that text. So if I open this 2D, I'm just hitting that down arrow. I can include the shape string. Then when I say OK, now this job has the shape string in, in it, not the rest of this. So when I do my engraving, my machine doesn't know that all the rest of this exists. I'm going to tell it where to start, where to stop, and I'm going to place a piece of wood or whatever I'm engraving in the right position. Okay, so for the job, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an engraving tool. I have this tool, which I quite like to use. I added these tools. You won't see these in yours unless you add them. So you'll have to do a new tool and add them in if you want to use them. Of course, for engraving, it's nice to use a V-bit. And when I do that, I am going to remove the default tool. And the reason I do that is because if you have multiple tools, it's going to ask you for multiple questions about those tools. So um, it's just easier to keep it clean, simple. Right here, you can change your... It doesn't actually say this, but this is the X and Y feed, and this is the Z feed, so the vertical feed, and this is your spindle speed. And you have to double click it so that you can edit it. If you don't double click it, I'll show you what happens. So I'm going to say that can go 150 because it's not really doing a lot of vertical. And I'm going to engrave it at 250. So if I don't double click it and I hit three, it changes my, my view changes because I'm actually changing view instead of changing um, this text over here. So you have to double click it to make sure it goes. So that, that's something that caught me out first. I was like, what, what happened? But I figured it out and um, it's fairly simple. So with that being said, I now have a job. And I want to do engraving, so I'm going to go up here, I'm going to pick engrave, and I'm going to tell it what we want to do. So 
again, because I picked, I, I deleted the default tool, I don't have more than one tool here, so it's going to automatically pick the right tool. So that helps us doing that. This is my clearance height and this is my safe height. I usually use five and three, so those are perfect. That's exactly what I want. And then my depths, it some for some reason it defaults to a 0.1 engraving, which you know if you have an uneven surface that it starts engraving on, you're not going to see anything. So the start depth zero, that's where we want it to start. I'm going to do this at three millimeter deep um, engraving. Notice again when you change that. It doesn't look like it changed, but if I click here, then it suddenly it's changed, so it's all good. And then I just noticed my, my mouse is not showing up again, so just bear with me. I just had to restart that uh, mouse software because it, for some reason it, it died. <laughs> We're good again now. So again, you want your minus three, and then what I'm doing is I'm actually clicking on these blue things to change these because you they're grayed out. You can't do any changes there. And the reason for that is it's... It's calculating this so one thing this does automatically is it makes the step down the amount that it goes down at a time so the depth of cut for each time it makes it equal to the tool diameter which I don't think I'd ever do that but that's okay um, I'm gonna make mine two millimeters as a step down now why did I make it two millimeters well the reason is I want it to be two because I'm going down three, so the first cut will be two millimeters deep, and then a finished cut of one millimeter deep. So it's only gonna go down to three, the first cut will go two, and the next one will go down one. So then we'll have a nice cut through, and then a clean up. And I'll show you that, I'm not gonna show you the whole simulation, because it takes a little while, but I'll show you how it, um, how it looks when it does that. I'll show you the E maybe. So again, I'm going to apply that, and you can see that it's applied. Um, that you can see that it's applied because you can see all of the movement of the tool there. So that looks good. I'm going to close that, and I'm going to simulate this so that you can, you guys can see it. I'm trying to keep that window shut. It keeps popping up, and. When I simulate it, so I only have one job, so there's there's only one job there, and it's there's only one uh, operation which is to engrave. So I'll start the simulation. I'll show you the E, and then I'll show you the end of it. You can see with the E that it's going around the outside, and then it goes around again, and that's when it drops to the second depth, and then. Actually, this one's going fairly fast, so we might be able to watch a little bit more of it. But you can see it's going around each letter twice. That's because it goes around at two millimeters deep. Then it goes around at three millimeters deep. So I get a one mil cut um, to finish up. And basically, that is how you do an engrave with a shape string. Now, that shape string can be any font and can be on any surface. And the way that I'm managing it with this uh, strategy is I'm basically telling it where it starts and where it ends in depth. And I've placed it where I want it to be around the, the coordinate system. So I can set up my job, put my uh, zero, zero over the center of where I want that word to be engraved and then kick it off and we should be good to go. So that actually, uh, the simulation was actually quicker than I expected. So you got to see the whole thing, but you could see it went around each letter twice. And what it would be doing is it's cutting with a V cutter around the edge of these letters. So they're going to be a little wider than it would appear. So where these two are close together, you might actually have some breakthrough and you're probably going to have some breakthrough right here. Um, so again, you can look at spacing for the font and that kind of stuff. Uh, or look at a font that has wider spacing if that's something that you want to make sure doesn't happen. Around the V and the E, I think you'd be fine. And around the A and the V, I think you'd be fine. But this R and this A and this N, I think they're going to break into each other. Now, generally, if you're doing this in wood, the engraving is, is pretty quick to do on the machine. 
and it's worth just cutting one on a piece of scrap just to see what it looks like and, and if it actually makes what you wanted it to make. So that is it. Hopefully uh, that will help you with engraving with a shape string. Okay, so that's how you engrave a shape string or some text. What happens if you want to engrave a picture? So what you do is you import an SVG and I'll show you how that works. So I'm going to import an SVG and I'm going to bring it in here. Now notice when I imported it, I should just show you that again to make sure. It says SVG as geometry, not just a regular old SVG. So it's coming in as geometry. If you find that your SVG doesn't have any geometry, it's probably because you don't have a path around the drawing and you need to do that. You need to create that path around the drawing so that it will see some geometry. Some SVGs will be, they'll work right off the bat. Some you're going to have to take into Inkscape and create that path. So I can show you how to do that. If you're interested, I'll do that at the end of this video. That way, if you're not interested in it, you don't need to watch to the end. Okay, first things first. <clears throat> what happened when I imported this thing is it brought it in as paths. Each one is a path. And so if I zoom in here a little bit, you'll see as I'm highlighting them, each element here is its own path. And that means that I now have a bunch of paths um, that make up my little penguin guy. So what I'm going to do <clears throat> is I'm going to convert those paths into a sketch because I want them to be a sketch so that we can do the engraving. To do that, we select the paths, all of them. And we're in the draft workbench. And we go to this guy here, which says convert bidirectionally between draft objects and sketches. And we just click it once. And it created 10 sketches. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off by hitting the space bar. I'm going to turn off all the paths. So these are now all the sketches. And it's great that I have 10 sketches, but that's a bit awkward to work with. So what we're going to do now is we're going to switch workbenches into the Sketcher workbench. I'm going to select all of those sketches. So they're all selected. Go into Sketch <clears throat> and say Merge Sketches. And now I get Sketch 11. So I'm, again, I'm going to turn off these 10 sketches. And now I have Sketch 11 which is our penguin. Now, from here, what we're going to do is we're going to move our penguin up to the origin because that's where we want him to be. So we can position him and sketch 11. I'm going to actually call it, I'm going to label it as penguin just for because so that we don't mix up with any of these other sketches or paths or anything else. And then I'm going to move this um, up. I want to get it to I'm going to move it left first. And I want to get it roughly in the middle because that's where I want to set up and start from. So I'm going to move my Y, move it up. And what I'm looking for is to get that roughly centered. So if I look there, I'm not really centered. Uh, that looks pretty good. I can do the same thing again. I can measure him from there to there. And that will give us one dimension. 50, let's say 54. And then I can measure him from, let me just turn off that pad. There, yeah. And then we can measure him from here to here. Here, Oop, I didn't press the measure. So boy, measure, measure. 
So he's like 54 by 50. So if I turn those guys off, and now I go back to my penguin sketch. So 54 would be 27. And 50 would be 25. And that's about center now. So that should be good. <coughs> Actually, it looks like looks like my 26 is better. Where I measured it might not be quite centered. That looks more centered to me. I'm looking at these these grid points, so it could actually I think we're good there. So basically what I'm doing when I set up my um, CNC, I'm going to be looking at the center point as being where my um, penguin arrives or where he gets engraved. I'll turn my pad back on so you can see roughly where he's sitting on that pad. And then, let's see better there. So that's where he's going to end up on that pad. So what we'll do now is we'll create a job in the path workbench. And we'll create a job. And we're going to say 2D. And we want the penguin sketch. We don't want all these other sketches. We just want the penguin. I say OK. Put it back on the top so we can see what's happening. And we want tools. I'm going to add that tool back in. So that happens to be the one we're using for this. I'm going to delete that one because I don't need it. And I'm going to say OK. And then I am going to add an engrave for this guy. Got the right tool. My height's gonna need to adjust again. So if I want to do that same, get him three mil deep, step down two mil. I'll get two cuts around him. My penguin is on there. Apply. Say OK. Up there again. Bring this guy over here. Zoom in. Let's do our middle guy here. You should see that it's quite happily engraving that old guy. And it runs around the outside shape. And drops down to the 2 mil. That's the outside shape of that. And then... <clears throat> Got to step over and I'll do you can actually see the on these red parts you can see where the tools go on that's where it raises up so I'll raise up and it'll move and if you look at the arrow direction that shows you where it's going to move from so when it gets to here it's going to move up and it's going to go up to that beak and do that beak and it's going to move over here do the eyes and we'll get to a finish point so there you have it it's uh, engraved the penguin and all looks good and I'm not going to keep the cut file, so I just say cancel. As I said before, these simulations can take longer than actually cutting it in the wood. So I didn't make you watch the whole thing because it took a little while. But I think the, um, the simulation is good to show you essentially what's going on, um, you know, as a test. So I'm just double checking that I have those depths right there. Now, I don't know if you want to see that cut in wood. If you do, leave a comment. I'll actually uh, do a cut for you. I'm not going to do it in this video. I'll do it in the next one. <clears throat> so if you're interested in seeing this or the engraved lettering cut in the wood, feel free to uh, leave me a comment below, and I will take care of cutting it for you on video. <clears throat> so as I said, the, the next thing I'm going to show you is how to get from a JPEG of that penguin um, to a PAR file in an SVG. Um, and bring that into FreeCAD and I'm going to show you that in Inkscape so I'll show you that next. So we're going to quickly convert a JPEG and to do that we're going to import the JPEG. So I'm going to import it, that penguin picture. 
Say OK, just accept the defaults. We're going to make the page the same size as the picture. Zoom works a little different on this guy. And then we're going to go into the path and trace the bitmap. We're going to use, if we do it this way, we lose his little uh, beak. So we're going to use edge detection update. It gives us a beautiful edge. So we're going to say OK. And then we're going to close that. And you can't see it, but it is actually there. So now what I'm going to do just quickly, I am going to create a new layer. I'm going to call that layer 2. And I am going to select this and say layer and move it to layer 2. Say move. Then I'm going to close layer 2 and close layer 1, open layer 2. So my old guy's on layer 2. So what I'll do is I'll close that, I'll open that. I will select this guy and delete him out of there now because we don't need him anymore. So then I'm also going to delete layer 1. So now all I've got is layer 2. And then I'm going to select this. And I'm just going to take path. And I'm going to do object to path. And what that will do if I select it now with this path selector, you can see all the little uh, joins in the path. I'm actually going to go path simplify. Well, it does just makes less of those uh, joins. So that's basically it. We've taken it from a JPEG to a path, and then we're just going to say File, Save As. And we're going to save it as our Penguin SVG. And I'm going to replace it. Boom, done. And that's exactly what you want to have left. And that's what we make our drawing now of. So if you've enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. If there's something you would like to see, just leave a comment. Let me know what it is and I'll consider making a video on that. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.